Well, you've been watching Surrender the Secret. This is just one of 10 parts of this program. Coming up next, we're going to take things a little bit closer to home. Stay with us as we talk with Sherry Neuenschwander and you can find out how Surrender the Secret can become something that can happen in your life right here in this region. Can you describe what it's like to make it to that point of freedom where you can recognize the forgiveness of God mm -hmm. and, and, and the ability to move on in life? Wow, you know, um, abortion changes us from the inside out and it's like breathing in death. Not only does abortion take the life of an innocent child, but it's like breathing in death into the spirit. And Jesus Christ has the resurrection power. But you know, um, again, the journey out of that denial is different for every one of us. I found myself in such a very dark place that um, I didn't know what was going on. I mean, it's just denial is very strong. It's that wall that goes up. And I had panic attacks, paranoia thoughts, even suicidal thoughts. And it was a really dark place. Abortion, in the arena of abortion, is just nothing but lies and, and darkness and death. But again, Jesus Christ is, has the resurrection power. So first of all, just realizing what you've done and reaching out to the Lord Jesus Christ is, is, is very important. But when I, <sighs> divine moments, and WTLW actually had a big part in that as well. And I have to confess that because those divine moments as the Lord began to remind me that he gently loved me because I didn't want to watch Christian TV or even have anything. You know, I left the church. I was running from God, family, friends and myself. And so fast, so far, you know, that I, you know, I thought that, you know, there was no return to be able to even return. But, um, the Lord began gently drawing me to himself and reminded me through WTLW, Christian radio. And uh, as I began to go into church, even though I had panic attacks at the beginning, you know, I, I knew I needed to return to the Lord. I, and when he began to uh, help me understand it was a grief that needs to be processed, um, that I knew being, being raised in the church, that Jesus was the answer to my pain. Um, but the enemy comes after us so much and, and he's the father of lies and he does not want us to move forward. He does not want us to come to that realization, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Greater is God in his mercy and his grace and his grace covers all sin, including abortion. Those of us who think that we've committed the most impartable sin, let me say, if you feel that today, um, let me just let you know that it is a lie from the enemy. It is a lie from the enemy because God is uh, full of grace and mercy. His mercies are fresh and new each day. And he wants us to be whole and healthy. He calls each and every one of us into healing because he loves us. And he has a plan for our life. And if we get stuck and cannot move forward, he wants to help us to move forward so we can be all that we can in Christ Jesus. And without him, we cannot do this. And it, it just depends. And it's easy. It's, I know we want to run from God when really we need to run to him. Mm -hmm. And I, it took me a long time to figure that out. And again, it's different for each and every one of us. You know, it's just, it's just different for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. You know, it's important for you to know that if you do feel like you also want to run from God, if that's what's stirring up inside of you, I encourage you right at this very moment, if you have a Bible, to take it out and to open it to a psalm and just start reading. Even if in the innermost parts of you, you don't want to have anything to do with that. I also encourage you to try having a conversation with God and realize how real it is and how much he truly wants to be your big, wonderful heavenly father to wrap his arms around you and say, you know what, I love you right now. Mm -hmm. I loved you that very day. If you are someone who's had an abortion or if you are a family member, he loved you that very day and he has never stopped loving you and he loved your child. We are mm -hmm. talking with Sherry Neuenschwander of Concepts for Truth and the National Helpline for Abortion Recovery. You see the number right there on the screen. Sherry, um, our series of Surrender the Secret is an ongoing series here at TV 44, so it's an opportunity for a lot of people in all walks of life to watch this. 
Can you give me just a little picture of this region? Because this is a rural region, um, you know, a rural community in a sense, Northwest Ohio. And it can be very easy, I think, for people to think that abortion hits the big cities, mm. but is it really affecting us? Mm. What, what, what's the picture here in this region? You know, as far as this region, I have to say, I, I don't know, but I will tell you this, one out of four women have experienced an abortion. Oh and within the church, one out of three. Mm. Okay, 70% of women who've experienced an abortion claim to have some type of religious background or faith. Mm. And so half of American women by the age of 45 will have an abortion, and half of those will have multiple, two or more, such as myself. Mm. So, you know, as far as this region and this area, I have to say, I'm not sure the total statistics, but when you look at it like that, mm -hmm. one out of four women have had an abortion. And so that, let me give you a visual. Over 56 million babies have been aborted since Roe versus Wade in 1973. That's twice the population of Texas. If that many people fell off the face of the earth today, how tragic would that be? It would be a catastrophic event. Amen? So if we think about that, that's twice the population of Texas. So in this area, in this small rural area, one out of four women have experienced an abortion. And must I say, this is just not a woman's issue because we have to talk about the men, okay? And, and men suffer from post-abortion trauma as well, but they may not understand that the feelings that they're experiencing is a direct relation to their abortion experience, whether they were part of that decision or not. And oftentimes men do find out afterwards, and I'm sorry that that happens um, because they are, um, their fatherhood has been taken away from them. But um, it affects men because God has given men that God divine instinct to protect their offspring. And so it does affect, affect the men as well. And we as women, we, we are designed to carry life. Mm -hmm. We're designed to be the nurturers, you know. Um, and so that is affected so much. And so again, it's just not a, a woman's issue because um, no matter how that child was conceived, and in my case, my first child, my son was conceived as a result of rape. Um, and it's a horrible thing to go through, but really and realistically, only about one to two percent um, of abortions as a result of rape or incest. I could have gotten help for my abortion, um, you know, some mental, emotional help. I could have chosen life for my child and placed him into an adoptive home. Adoption is a precious gift to give a child, um, you know, because it is, it's just precious. And I could have done that, and I was absolutely wrong in my choice. And oftentimes in the church and outside of the church, people have their exceptions. You know, abortion is a bad thing. You shouldn't do it except when it comes to abortion or if it comes to incest. Really, yes, the way the child was conceived is not a, it, you know, is not the way the, you know, it's just, it's not a, the, the circumstances that mm -hmm. surrounds that conception of that child may not be the best, but um, God is the creator of all life. And he has a purpose and a plan. And I didn't realize that of, because I was so caught up in my fear and my shame. And honestly, Jennifer, to tell you the truth, there is shame when it comes to having, a, getting pregnant outside the boundaries of marriage even though today we it's readily accepted mm -hmm. amen it is it is readily accepted um, but still there's still some shame in that mm -hmm. um, so when you go 
and making that decision, you are scared of what people are going to say. Um, people, what you know, your peers, your family, and that was in my case. Even though I was 26 years old, I was running my own business. I've been married and divorced. You know, um, I was on my own. But even then, I thought, what will my parents say? Mm. At age 26. And so, you know, we do, we, these, these are the fears that go on. Mm -hmm. How am I going to financially support that child? But, you know, if we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I will be honest with you again, when I was making that choice in both cases, um, that I believe God was telling me, Sherry, don't do it. Don't do it. But in the midst of that fear, lies become your truth mm -hmm. and he just basically just you know he gave me that opportunity but i chose to i chose to ignore it i chose to abortion but again god in his mercy mm -hmm. amen you know and if you are at home thinking about the fact that you too sold out to that fear and you heard those lies and you went ahead with something and you were probably just kicking yourself right now realizing the mistake that you made it's so important for you to again remember that it is not too late for you the love that jesus christ has for you is so real and a place like the national helpline for abortion recovery is an important step to allow you to be able to truly accept that forgiveness that jesus christ has and also a step for you to be able to forgive yourself um, the healing pit stops can take some time, can't they? Absolutely, and then you can kind of bounce back and forth through those grieving stages or the, what we call the pit stops. And the reason why we again we call it the pit stops because it's a journey and Concepts of Truth mm -hmm. kind of calls it the pit stops. And in our, um, in our curriculum that we follow, abortion recovery, um, it's Concepts of Recovery, the journey. Uh, but yes, you can kind of bounce it back and forth um, in those grief stages and um, but Lord, the Lord still just gently pulls us out of that. And if we bounce back, he just, you know, reminds us once again that he is there. But giving ourselves permission to grieve um, is also another step. There, there are steps in this journey. Amen. And as God brings us out into that denial, then, you know, we want to give voice. And that's, again, not an easy thing to do. And that's why it's important that anyone's call that's listening to my voice today call the National Helpline for Abortion Recovery, 1-866-482-LIFE. But, um, yeah, you can uh, kind of go back and forth in these uh, grief stages. Yes. All yes. right. Well, for this portion of our programming, we are running out of time. I want to thank you, Sherry, for yeah. giving us such important knowledge and encouraging people out there to realize that there is, there is freedom and there is a way to find that freedom. And again, I just want to give you the National Helpline for Abortion Recovery and that number you can see there on the screen, one 482 life Jesus did come to bring you life and that life you qualify for that life. You are loved, you are special, you are important, and you are valuable. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.